Jibo. Yeah, my name is Lififi Tadi. I'm a painter, poet, and a nice guy. We always and uh, really interested in the development of the world's consciousness. And refine the you know, because this world is getting really, really, really fucked up, especially when it comes to issues of racism and things like that. And it is horrible that, I mean, I think the white people have to begin to motherfucking wake up and tell these other white people that this is wrong. It was a right to lynch people in the 1800, 1900s, but this is 2000, you know. So we need some goddamn white Malcolm X's to tell white people, like, cut the bullshit, you know. And uh, let us begin to understand this is damn wrong, you know. And yeah, to, to wake up. Man. We are human beings, we are on this planet, we are trying to do the best of what we can. And to be white is no longer that important. It's just another shade of black. That's it. Yeah. Uh, what about the album? Huh? Huh? What about the, the coming album now? Uh, Creative uh, Confluence by Unisex. I think this is is just a good beginning, you know, of... Think yeah, yeah, we, I mean, the name of the album, I know, is Creative Confluence, that yeah. we are working together. And, I mean, Confluence is like meeting of streams into this collective Harvey Ocean and things like that. So... Uh, it, it will continue. We will work as I, we were, I was saying that now we have even found another new dimension where I used to read poetry and then you made the music to it and then now we've found out today that uh, now it is even better and we hope we continue to do that to work with me reading my poetry to your, your, your music and things like that. And this is very, very, for me, a, a, a good beginning. And I hope we can add more other musicians, you know, to contribute to this kind of uh, creative confluences. It's supposed to be, yeah. The poems that I, I'm, I'm reading right now, they are only purely dedications to some of South Africa's finest musicians. And uh, it's important for me to make the young generation know that actually we as a generation recognized each other because these young musicians don't do any tributes to other artists. It's very, very, very rare you find a musician has made a song dedicated to a poet, a painter, a dancer, a photographer, a filmmaker, and things like that. They don't do that. It's the best thing they can do is they write music for each other, you know, and not, and so I, in this effort, is saying, you know, at least from the poet's perspective, you know, I'm recognizing musicians, because this is only part of it, I've written Oh, lots of other poems dedicated to photographers, filmmakers, dancers, you know, and the whole spectrum of the arts. And I hope that we will be in a position to cover, you know, this broad spectrum of uh, creative working.
what about Unique Sex, the electroacoustic universal art music project? Yeah, I think it's just a, a, a good beginning and I hope uh, we can continue and then it can go beyond Sweden and uh, I'm, I'm going to try by all means to introduce it to some South African friends of mine and yeah, see what we can do as soon as we, we release it and things like that, which is good. Mm. Can you tell how did we meet? Yes, I, 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 if I remember, I, I know we met at Harvey uh, Cropper Studio and uh, that's where, I mean, all the important creative artists were meeting and the list is long, 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 long. But this is how we actually was talking about painting and poetry and music and I mean Harvey's place was more of a, a culture centrum you, you know and uh, it was yeah a, 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 an academy in itself and I mean for me Harvey's place was the most important in the sense that I mean when I got there, I was a student at this Yellow's Borea school and uh, Jackie Mazibuko was the guy who actually introduced me to Harvey and, uh, and I remember it was so funny when I first met uh, Harvey that I had all these books, you know, that we was going to show to him. So he can understand I knew about him even when I was still in South Africa, you know. <clears throat> and then when I got there, I had these books and I was saying, yes, you know, I have read about you and I'm not interested about me. I want to know about you, motherfucker. <laughs> and tell me what you're doing and things like that. No, I'm actually in Sweden as a student and uh, yeah, that's exactly how we actually met. And then he said, well, I have a school here. And I said, well, I would like to be part of the school. And then he introduced me to his students and the students said, well, actually, <coughs> I shouldn't even pay because, you know, they used to pay for studying at Harvey. I think it was a hundred krona a lesson or something like that. And they said, no, you don't have to pay, you are a refugee and things. And this was 1980. And boom, I became one of Harvey's most important students. And this has always said, I've learned from Harvey much, much more than I learned from my Yellis Borea school about art and things like that and yeah so you are an artist too yes 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 i am a, a, a good painter actually as taught by harvey i mean he introduced me to as i said i've learned more from harvey about art than at my school and I remember he took me even to the most basic thing. I had to start with color theory and things, which is a thing we never did even at, at, at our school there. And he told me I have to master this. And that's why I think I'm, I'm even in my, the context of my own country, that education of color theory helped me a lot. That I consider even myself the most important colorist in the history of South African art, which is thanks to, to Harvey. What about those people? Uh, can you name some people uh, from uh, Harvey's place? Uh, uh, I mean, Harvey's place had so many, many, many people. I mean, like, I remember the most important guys, we say actually a Greg, the Greek, yeah, 
I can't remember his surname, Papa Dios or something. The, then Greg was one of those very, very dedicated, I mean, also one of the most important students of Harvey Yoram Modin, and even uh, guys like uh, Mats Bigit, and, and lots of other painters who were at Harvey's place. As I said, Harvey's place was and lots of even important politicians and things like that. And then you had all these uh, people like Hans Ulof, you know, and Pia and all these people who had... It was really, really an important place. But the most important thing is that Harvey was accommodating lots of people and unfortunately his openness was without limits and that's why at the end of his place was deteriorating you know and that's when he advised me like uh, the five five as he used to call me <laughs> i think uh, it's time you get your own damn studio because this is not this place is not what it used to be, you know. But in the beginning, it was like really, really um, academics and scholars and, you know, poets. And I mean, I remember even guys like uh, Alan Polite, you know, really like, you know, important people. But on my side, I mean, Harvey was. Ah, a real, 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 real intellectual of the highest. Actually, to be very, very honest, he's one of the most educated human beings I have ever met. I mean, not as a painter, but I mean, knowledgeable to the maximum. And this is one of the things he always told me, you know, if you want to be a good artist, my boy, read, 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 read. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I understood what he meant when he said read, 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 because the most perfect uh, anagram of read is that inside read there's there. And inside there there's dear. So there read dear. <laughs> And also, another important contribution that Harvey made personally to me was that uh, Harvey introduced me to writing letters, you know, because I used to write letters on this A4 thing. And then Harvey said, no, man, let me show you, write letters. and shows me some letter he had received from some girlfriend of his, I don't know who the hell this girl was, but she was based, I think, in Japan and things like that. And it was an incredible letter, like one meter by one meter. And I, boom, this is fucking fantastic. And boom. Then I started writing letters which were like 20 meters by one meter, others 12 meters, others even the biggest letter I wrote was like 36 meters by, so have you introduced me to that. And also, as I was saying that actually, this is one of the things that actually makes me one of the most important South African artists because no artist, no black artist has written more letters to other artists than me. And artists in, I mean, letters in such incredible dimensions. I remember when some of the letters were like books, 78 pages and just filling them up and things like that. And some which were really like challenging and beautiful was that I would actually take this uh, 
500 piece jigsaw puzzle, put it together, and then after putting it together, turn it upside down and write a letter behind it. And then when I'm finished, dismantling, put it in an envelope and send it. So if you want to read that letter, you have to actually put the jigsaw puzzle first together and then turn it upside down and read. So these are some of the most, most important things. And also, uh, Harvey actually really, really encouraged me. The important thing is that uh, a lot of us, you know, became good at what we were. I remember even the most funny part was when Shen, Chalipaka's wife, came to the studio there and then was telling Harvey, hey, you know, Harvey, it's so funny that, you know, this uh, redneck wants to make uh, a movie about uh, Chalipaka. And Harvey said, well, which redneck is this? And Clint Eastwood. <laughs> And then <clears throat> she even had one small painting that Charlie Parker had made, but she wanted Harvey to authenticate it because there was a lot of fake paintings by Charlie Parker. They were, and Charlie Parker didn't, hasn't made even eight paintings, but he was such a powerful phenomenon that they were even faking some of his paintings and things like that, or some of the eight paintings. And Harvey was telling Chen, no, this, I remember this painting. It is Charlie Parker who painted it and things like that. But the funny thing was that uh, Harvey was actually, when he was teaching Chalipaka painting, and then Chalipaka was teaching Harvey alto sax, you know, and then uh, Jackie McLean was telling Chalipaka that, hey man, babe, you know, be careful to teach Harvey alto because, you know, he might blow you away the next time. And then Chalipaka was saying, you know, I wish he does that because it's lonely up here. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fucking fantastic that he didn't say, oh, you know, like, okay, welcome, man. I mean, I need company, you know, in this level of hierarchy. So let them blow me up and things. And that kind of positiveness reminds me of another incident when Don Jerry was at the studio there, and then it was so funny that uh, Don had just launched his new cassette of uh, Multiculti. So he was playing it for us. But while he was, this cassette was playing, Don was talking, you know, like... And then there was this other Russian friend of Harvey. He wasn't a painter, poet or nothing, but the guy who used to hang out called Rune, Rune the Sailor. We used to call him the Rune the Sailor. And then he was trying to listen to this cassette of Pancheri and Don was talking, talking. And Rune didn't know who the hell this guy was, you know? And then he was so irritated and then told Don Cher, shut the fuck up. Can't you understand we're listening to great music here? <laughs> and then Harvey uh, was trying to explain or say, hey man, you know Rune, you know who? And then don't tell her, shh, call it. This is the highest respect I have ever received in my life. To be told to shut the fuck up to my own music. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was all these fucking Im important uh, incidences. And this reminds me of another time when 
But another, speaking of this American, the pianist, uh, Beach Morris, incredible piano player, was also at Harvard and he came and was angry, was saying, man, proper, you know, I'm so fucking furious because I was reading this biography of Miles Davis and you know, Miles, in the book, he calls Charlie Parker slime. And fuck Miles. Actually, I wrote a small poem, and that poem was so fucking incredible that after he said it, I had memorized it. It says, Miles sitting on his piles, I mean piles of money. And when he said, bed, was slime, he didn't realize he made a perfect anagram of his name because in Miles there is slime. Fat and beautiful. <laughs> so, all these things of jazz, Sonny Rawlings, and he showed me even in his address book of all the prisons he used to write to Sonny Rawlings that he was in this prison and all that thing and this is the other prison in New York where I wrote to him and this and okay but actually when Sonny Rollins was getting his uh, well, the Swedish prize for musicians Pulitzer yeah. Prize that uh, he actually invited Harvey to the hotel so Harvey couldn't go to this to the lunch and uh, band actually made a one hour recording of Harvey's meeting with Sonny Rollings and Sonny Rollings was actually the guy who got Harvey to start painting you know because Harvey after this tragic death of his son, he was so devastated. He didn't paint for 10 years and things like that. And then he was telling uh, Sonny Rollins, no, you know, uh, I can't paint because I have arthritis and things like that. And Sonny Rollins said, well, I think having arthritis is an advantage, I mean, because then you can do just like Matisse, you know, tie the brush and let give us the other dimension of how you paint because you can't hold the brush the way you used to do it and things like that. And that's how you can get back into, into painting. So this thing of arthritis, Harvey, is a lame excuse. You know, you, you can do better than that. And just after, a week later, Harvey started with the sculptures and things like that, which was like, wow. The Harvey used to talk a lot about there's this crazy young French man who's so talented and he's doing every fucking thing you can think of. And I think it was when you were because by that time, when you were beginning to come a lot, the time, I was already beginning to go to South Africa, you know, in the 90s and yes. 2000 and things like that. I wasn't really all the way. Uh, actually, I got in touch with Unisex. It's, I think it's a history that is like over 20 years, but we first met at uh, Harvey's studio at uh, Group Magagatan. And Harvey, as you all know, was the prime mover of the arts. And uh, through him, we are continuing in his spirit, you know, so-called uh, creative geniuses coming together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Lififi Tadi. At the present moment, I'm a poet, 
And I am thankful to Unisex Electronic Acoustic Universal Art Music, a realist art film and music edition. We will be hearing more from me through this company. Hope you support it in the future. Thank you very much. That vibration that echoed in harmony with the Koi Sun lithophones from the Namibian desert and the finger of God twitched as though conducted. The rain dance.